Let's take a look at math, grade 4, module 6, lesson 4. Decimal fractions. Topic B, tenths and hundredths. This is a meter stick. What is its length? Well, its length is one meter. How many centimeters are in a meter? Well, there's 100 centimeters in a meter. And we can't tell looking at this meter stick, so I'm going to move it over to the side a little bit, and we're going to zoom in to see the end of it. And then we can see that it's like this space is 96 centimeters, this space makes 97 centimeters, this space makes 98 centimeters, this space makes 99 centimeters, and in this space right here, even though the number 100 is not listed, this space is space 100. So all the way to this end is 100 centimeters. So one meter is equal to 100 centimeters. What fraction of a meter is one centimeter? Since there's 100 centimeters in the whole meter, one of those centimeters would be one one hundredth of a meter. So this is how we would write that as a fraction. If we wanted to write it as a decimal, we would write it this way. One one hundredth of a meter. It would be written zero decimal zero one. So let's think of another one. Let's say we want to figure out three hundredths of a meter. How would we write that as a decimal? Well, if we look at this one, we had one one hundredth, so we wrote zero decimal zero one. For three one hundredths, we would write it this way. Zero decimal zero three meters. What I have here is, um, it's an area model that I've taken and made the same size as my meter stick. And then I separated or partitioned my area model into ten equal parts. And then I shaded in one of those parts. So this is showing that I have one tenth shaded. How many centimeters? equal one-tenth of a meter. Well, I can think of that this way. I know I have 100 in my whole meter, so what would be in this shaded portion? So in this one-tenth piece, I have 10 centimeters. I have 10 parts. I can also write this as a decimal this way. that one-tenth of a meter is equal to ten-hundredths of a meter. And I read this the same way I read this fraction, because they're saying the same thing. Now, let's decompose this one-tenth part to prove that our number sentences are correct. In order to do that, I need to break up my tenth into the ten hundredths that make it up. So I can do that by separating this into ten parts. I can also think about each one of these parts containing ten parts. And then in the end, I have a hundred. So this shows that one-tenth of a meter is equal to ten-hundredths of a meter. All right, in this example, I'm going to shade in one-tenth of this meter. So how many hundredths are in this tenth? And we just did this on the other slide. It's ten. I have ten-hundredths in this part. So if I shade in another one, I would have twenty hundredths. 
So you could say I have two tenths here, or you can think of it as being 20 hundredths. Now, what if I wanted to add five hundredths more to this? What would I have to do to this part? Well, I'd have to break it up. I would have to decompose it into ten parts. And then I could shade in five of them. So when I look at this, and add this, add them together to find how much is shaded in all. Well, I have two tenths plus five hundredths. And when I add that together, I get twenty-five hundredths. Because here I have ten, here I have ten, and here I have five. Ten, twenty, five. I can also write this 25 hundredths meter as a decimal. Zero decimal two five is 25 hundredths. I can also show this with a number bond and showing that if I take two tenths and I take five hundredths and add them together, I get 25 hundredths. All right, that'll take care of things for lesson four, where we've been using meters to model the decomposition of one whole into hundredths, also representing and counting hundredths.